Chapter 8.3 Quick Review Exercises 1 through 10. This section 8.3 in our book has to do with hyperbolas. And so these are preliminary exercises to working with hyperbolas. So we're going to cover some basic things that would help with hyperbolas. In exercise 1 and 2, find the distance between the given points. And for this, there is a distance formula. And our distance is equal to the square root of quantity x sub 2 minus x sub 1 squared plus quantity y sub 2 minus y sub 1 squared and taking the square root of all that. So it's really a version of the Pythagorean theorem. So if we call this first coordinate pair x sub 1 comma y sub 1 and our second coordinate pair x sub 2 comma y sub 2 we can go ahead and access this formula use it to our benefit and so we're going to take y uh, x sub 2 which is negative 7 and we're going to subtract x sub 1 which is 4 and square that plus we're going to take y sub 2 which is negative 8 and then we're going to uh, subtract negative 3 which is y sub 1 and square that and for that we get this negative 7 minus 4 that's going to be negative 11 squared and this negative 8 minus negative 3, well, that's going to be negative 5. That's going to be the same as adding 3 to negative 8. And so we're going to have d is equal to square root of negative 11 squared is 121. And then negative 5 squared is 25. So we're going to get d our distance is going to be square root of 141 which is going to be just a little bit less than 12 because square root of 12 is the square root of 144 is 12 so let's go on to our next problem but look at let's look at two uh, same type of formula but you're going to get letters in there and you're not going to be able to simplify because you won't be able to take for instance, c, y sub 2, which is c, minus negative 3. So that's not going to work out as far as simplifying. The next size 3 and 4 solve for y in terms of x. So we're just going to be solving for y. So we have the equation y squared over 16 minus x squared over 9. And this so happens to be the equation of a hyperbola and so if we add x squared over 9 to both sides of this equation we have a cancellation here and yeah negative x squared over 9 plus x squared over 9 canceled equal 0 so we have y squared over 16 is equal to 1 plus x squared over 9. And then if we cross multiply or just multiply the whole entire equation by 16, we're going to get 16 over 16 cancels. So we get y squared is equal to 16 times 1 is 16 plus 16 ninths x squared. And the only thing I want to do first of all here is is uh, factor out 16 ninths from each of these terms on the right. So I'm going to end up here the upper right y squared equals 16 ninths. Now 16 ninths times what equals 1? Well, that's going to be 9. And then we have 
16 ninths times what equals x squared? Well, that's just going to be x squared. So now what we're going to do is take the square root of both sides of this. So I'm just going to bring this down. y squared equals 16 ninths. 9 plus x squared. And we take the square root of each side of this equation. We have y equals, now, in solving for y, we're going to end up with a plus or minus. And what is the square root of 16 over 9? Well, square root of 16 is 4, and square root of 9 is 3. So we have 4 thirds. Uh, square root of 9 plus x squared. And this is going to be our uh, solution, or solutions for y. We have a plus side and a minus side. The, the plus equation represents the top half of the hyperbola, and the negative sign, minus, represents the bottom half of the hyperbola. And then it's a similar type of exercise for problem four. You should get, just as a, just as a guide, y equals plus or minus one-third the square root of quantity x squared minus 36. So if you work out problem four, that's what you should get as an answer. Next, problem problems uh, exercise five through eight solve for x. So in this case, the way we have this set up is that it's recommended in the book that five and six be solved without a calculator and seven and eight with a calculator. And so what we're going to do with this is write out square root of 3x plus 12 minus square root of quantity 3x minus 8 is equal to 10. And what we're going to do is square both sides of the equation. And squaring both sides of this equation, we have, I'm going to write it out as explicitly as possible, we have 3x plus 12, and that's going to be squared, plus what we have is negative square root of 3x minus 8 squared, and we're going to have minus 2 times square root of 3x plus 12, and also times 3x minus 8, and that's going to be equal to 10 squared or 100. And the square root of of uh, 3x squared plus 12 squared is going to be 3x plus 12. And then we have this negative square root of 3x minus 8 is going to be plus 3x minus 8. And we have minus 2 square root of quantity 3x plus 12 times square root of quantity 3x minus 8 is equal to 100. And combining like terms on the left side, 3x plus 3x is 6x. So you have 6x, and 12 minus 8 is going to be 4. So you have 6x plus 4 minus 2 we have 3x plus 12 and times 3x minus 8 is equal to 100. And next we're going to subtract 6x 
and 4 from both sides of the equation, minus 6x minus 4. So what we end up with is we have 6x minus 6x cancel, 4 minus 4 cancels. We have negative 2 square root of 3x plus 12 times uh, quantity 3x minus 8. That's going to be equal to negative 6x. And 100 minus 4 is going to be 96. And then we're going to divide everything here by negative 2. So negative 2, both sides of the equation. And what we have is square root of 3x plus 12 times quantity 3x minus 8. And that's going to be equal to negative 6 divided by negative 2 is going to be 3x. And then we have negative uh, 96 divided by negative 2 is going to be minus 48. Now, what we're going to do is square both sides of this equation. Okay, so we square. I put these purple parentheses here. And so what we're left with is squaring both sides. We're going to end up with 3x, 23x plus 12, and 3x minus 8, and equals, on the right side, we're going to have 3x times 3x, we're going to have 9x squared, and we're going to have this 3x times negative 48 times 2, that's going to end up being negative 288x, and then negative 48 times negative 48 is going to be plus 2304, and this plus 2304 more legibly, and then squaring out the left side, we're going to get 3x times 3x, so we're going to get 9x squared. And then we're going to have plus 12 times 3x, which is going to be 36x. And then we're going to have minus 8 times 3x, is going to be minus 24x. And then negative 8 times 12 is going to be negative 96. And that's going to be equal to 9x squared minus 288x plus 2,304. And I hope you can see that 9x squared and 9x squared, uh, we can cross both those off because they're the same on each side of the equation. And then we're going to come up here and uh, work below where I've pointed in purple. So we have left 36x minus 24x, which is 12x, and we have minus, 20, minus 96, and on the right side we have negative 288x, and then we have plus two, uh, 2,304. out of room. And then we're going to just solve for x. We're going to add 288x to both sides of this equation plus 288x. And we're going to likewise add 96 to both sides of this equation. So plus 96 on the left plus 96 on the right, and negative 96 plus 96 cancel. On the right side, we have negative 288x plus 288x. They cancel. And what we're left with is 12x plus 288x, which is 300x, 
equals uh, 2,304 plus 96, so that's going to be 2,400. And now if we divide both sides of this equation by 300, 300, we have x is equal to 8. Now, the book shows the answer uh, uh, there being no solution. And I toyed with this for a while because I'd come up with x equals 8. But what you have to do is go back into this original equation, which I have up here. If we take 8, okay, we're going to have plugging in. I'm doing this at the, at the top. We have 3 times 8 plus 12 minus square root of 3 times 8 3 times 8 minus 8 equal to 10. Well, 3, uh, 3 times 8 is 24 plus 12 is 36. So we get square root of 36 minus and 3 times 8 minus 8, well, that's going to be minus square root of 16 is equal to 10. And so we have 6 minus 4, square root of 36 is 6, minus 4, square root of 16 is 4, is equal to 10. But we know that that's not true. And so what we call this is there is no solution. And more properly stated, we could call this solution an extraneous solution. So no real solution. And what is an extraneous solution? Well, it's a solution that's created in the process of solving the problem. So in, in squaring things, we created this extraneous solution. And you'll find this often in quadratic functions with square root or rational functions or logarithmic equations, solutions. So, um, there is no real solution here. Let me just say, let me just write it out here. No real solution. Okay, so we'll just call it that. And as far as the other problems, in 6, if you work out 6, you're going to get an answer of x equals 1, something to look forward to. And problems 7 and 8, a graphing calculator suggested. And so what I did in my graphing calculator is I put the left side of this equation in place. Okay, and so when I click to the graphing calculator, that's what you see. And then what we're going to do in addition to that is subtract 1 from both sides of this equation. So we're going to end up with all this, okay, 6x squared, 26x squared plus 12, minus 26x squared plus 1. And then we've subtracted 1 is equal to 0. So if we graph this left side, we're going to be able to read off the x-axis what our answer is. And so we're going to subtract 1, and then we just graph the function, and we see a solution here on the left side. So I'm going to go to Menu, uh, Analyze Graph, 6. We're going to look for a 0. We say left side, right side. So we have a 0 at negative 2. x equals negative 2. And then menu, analyze graph. We'll look for a 0. Left side, right side, we have a 0 at 2. So our solutions are, by graphing, using a graphing calculator, x equals negative 2, comma, x equals 2.
Okay, next. I'll buy away for eight. What we're going to get for an answer here is x is approximately equal to 25.55 and also x is approximately equal to negative 25.55. See if you get the same thing by graphing for problem number 8. Now problem number 9, exercise 9 and 10, solve the system of equations. And so here we have c minus a equals 2 and c squared minus a squared equals 16a over 3. Well, what I think I'm going to do is replace this c squared, the c and c squared with a. And so to do that, I'm going to solve for c. So this left equation that we have c minus a is equal to 2, well c is equal to a plus 2. Okay, c is equal to a plus 2. And so substituting a plus 2 in place of c, we have quantity a plus 2, okay, replacing the c, minus a squared equals 16a over 3. And now squaring this out on the left side, we have a squared, and we have plus 4a plus 4, and we have minus a squared is equal to 16a over 3. And a squared minus a squared cancel each other. And so um, let's go ahead and continue. What I'm going to do is change this 4a here into thirds. We have thirds on the right. So 4a in thirds is 12 thirds a plus 4 is equal to 16 a over 3 and if we subtract 12 thirds a from both sides of this equation What we're going to get is 4 is equal to, well, 16 minus 12 is 4. So we have 4a over 3. And what we can do now is multiplying by the reciprocal of 4 thirds, both sides of this equation, and the reciprocal of 4 thirds is 3 fourths. And so what we have is 3 fourths times 4 thirds on the right side cancel out. On the left side we have 3 fourths of 4 is equal to A. And so therefore, I'll move up to the right here, A is going to be equal to 4 over 4 cancel each other, A is equal to 3. So that's one of our answers. And then we go back to our original equation we're trying to solve for C. And we have, I'm working on the left here, C minus A is equal to 2. Well, if, if A is 3, C minus, minus 3 is equal to 2. And adding 3 to both sides of the equation, C is equal to 5. So our solution set is A is equal to 3 and C is equal to 5. And then, uh, I'm not going to work it out for, for problem 10. The solutions you're going to get working out the problem are A is equal to 12 and C is equal to 13. So good luck on these even number problems. And thanks for viewing.